Do you have a thicker pen? Uh, to talk of the day, I uh, will try and make it uh, short and concise and perhaps uh, uh, not throw too much at you after you have had perhaps uh, one or two heavy days. Uh, how long has this been since you started? Uh, two days? This is the third day. Okay, fine. So, you are already well along the way. Uh, I just want to talk to you about uh, sort of talk and introduce to you uh, certain things in, uh, uh, I mean, in a topic related to uh, perhaps machine learning, perhaps statistics and that is essentially the science or art of prediction. Okay? Uh, it is a subfield of, I mean in some sense you can think of it as a learning problem, in some sense you can think of it as a class of optimization problems, uh, never mind what they are called. Okay? So, anyway I am from uh, the department of ECE here at ISC. And, uh, Firstly, let me thank the organizers for calling me here. Uh, it, it's, it's great to address uh, such a young audience. You know, IIC until a few years ago uh, was only uh, a haven for postgraduates, and essentially it was a very boring place. Okay, so only now have young people started coming here, and uh, it's great to see even younger people come here. And I hope you'll uh, come to IIC sometime in the future and spend many days. Okay, so uh, so title of this talk is how to bet better and get better prediction learning. Uh, just to give you a very high level overview, okay, uh, this is going to be a talk about uh, what you call techniques in online learning. The online is not online as in the sense of logging on to the internet, but it is more, uh, uh, it means the word sequential. Okay, So, there, these are a class of problems that occur very often in daily life. Uh, many of us solve these problems unconsciously, not knowing that they are online learning problems, but they are essentially uh, in, in general sequential decision making problems. Okay, So, learning is essentially very broadly defined. Okay, So, this is one essentially very broad definition of learning or machine learning or human learning or artificial intelligence, whatever you call it. Right? It is a science of how uh, one or an agent improves performance by observing data. Okay, So, essentially any system that improves its performance with time and with more observations. Okay, Something that learns quote unquote from the environment. Okay, So, learns is a very loaded word, it is very philosophical. But uh, for an engineer's point of view, it's any system that improves performance by as as it gets more and more data. Okay? Data is any form of observations or information or feedback or reaction. Okay, we'll make these things a little more concrete in some examples that I'll present to you. But very broadly speaking, this is what learning is. Uh, a sort of more restricted uh, sort of uh, uh, set of problems in learning is what is called online learning or sequential decision making problems. It is essentially the science again of how to improve your performance by repeatedly observing data. Okay? Uh, so, by this again what I mean will become very clear uh, in a few slides to follow and we will also I hope I uh, will try to engage you in a, in, in a series of examples to essentially show what can be done and what cannot be done okay? and how it should be done. Okay? So, feel free to interrupt me at any time if you do not see anything, uh, if, you, if you see something that you do not understand raise your hand, okay? we will go very slowly. The applications of uh, trying to solve such online uh, sequential decision making learning problems are many fold. Okay? So, people use it all the time in finance, okay? essentially how do you make decisions under uncertainty is what you should think about at the back of your mind. Okay? So, how do you, if I have a portfolio, I have 100 dollars to invest in the stock market, okay? where do I invest? How do I change my portfolio every day? Okay? Suppose some stock tanks tomorrow, right? how do I reinvest the money in something else? Okay? I have an objective, I want to earn as much money for instance. It need not be the only objective in life, but whatever objective it is, you have to take decisions under uncertainty to satisfy certain objectives okay? or certain goals or certain metrics. Uh, so, in finance, in communications, okay, you are you're a radio transmitter, you have a, you have a set of channels on which you can transmit, a channel is a set of frequency bands. Which channel should I transmit given that I have some limited power? Okay? I want to earn uh, maximum profit in the sense of being able to transmit as much information as possible. Okay, so, which channels, what do I decide to transmit on which channels, how do I change these allocations with time. Okay, this is what is happening in all your communication devices, your smartphones and so on. Okay, so, a lot of decisions being made often under the presence of a lot of uncertainty. Okay. Internet commerce is a very, very emerging area. I mean, so machine learning has pretty much taken over uh, a large part of internet commerce uh, modeling uh, in the sense of uh, design of these so called recommendation systems. Okay? So, when you go to Amazon or Flipkart you know, and you enter some search, you search for some product, it shows you a bunch of things, it recommends to you, okay? it is trying to recommend things to you that it thinks you like. Okay? And if two people start off on the same website and create a series of different searches, 
you will find that soon the recommendations that are being issued are, uh, are quite different okay. So, there is something some agent or some system behind that is trying to essentially learn what the user is like okay and trying to optimize some objective function of the company for instance okay, maximum revenue or something okay. Uh, in general in the field of optimization uh, there are several problems I think the previous speaker talked about optimization trust about optimization okay. you might have to do optimization when you do not even know the optimization problem perfectly okay there might be a lot of uncertainty about your constraints about the objective function and so on. So, how do you gradually optimize at the same time how do you refine your estimates okay. Industrial engineering, machine maintenance, resource allocation these are classic problems that essentially led to these mod models of sequential decision making uh, and, and many 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 other applications okay. But uh, so, this is essentially the, the sales pitch a very very broad sales pitch you can forget about all of this. Uh, let me try and engage you in thinking about a very very stylized model of online learning. Uh, in fact, a very specific example, okay, it is what I call the bit prediction game, okay. So, this is a game that let us say all of you will play together. The goal here is very simple, okay. There is a certain bit sequence, a bit is either 0 or 1, okay. There is a sequence of bits and you need to predict these bits one at a time, okay. So, bit is very general, okay. Even though it has only two values, you can model a lot of things using just bits, okay. Th think of bit, bits in a sequence as let us say the sequence of uh, uh, you know, uh, someone talked about the MET department, okay. So, whether the MET department, so see, think of sequence as uh, a bit as basically whether it rains or not on a certain day, okay. So, the nth bit in the sequence is essentially whether it is going to rain on the nth day or not, okay. Very, very basic representation and you are essentially the MET department trying to predict what will happen in the next day, whether it will rain or not, okay. Suppose you are, you just have to issue very, very simple predictions. Tell me whether it is going to rain or not, okay. And Imagine that the creator of the universe whoever it is has laid out the entire weather pattern for the rest of time okay, and you are trying to sort of observe and predict. Okay. So, clear very broadly, okay. Stop and ask me whenever you have any questions, okay. Okay, so, so let us start, we will start uh, at ground 0. Uh, I am not making any assumptions about anything. All that I have told you is that you have to predict a bit sequence, okay. Great. Okay, tell me if my writing is illegible or legible also, okay. So, I have here a bit sequence written on a piece of paper, okay. The game is as follows, you predict a bit and I write it down, I write, you predict the next bit and then I tell you what the next bit it is, is okay. So, okay, so I give you the first bit, okay, you can all see this, okay. The rules are as follows, you get to predict the next bit. What I have here I will write down after you give me a prediction and you will suffer a loss if you predict it wrong, okay. If you will suffer no loss if you get it correct. So, the loss is equal to 1 for you if you get it right. If you do not get it right the loss is 0, okay. And naturally you want to try and minimize the loss, okay. Let us come to that even later, but this is basically the game, okay. So, give me something for the second bit, okay. So, okay. So, let us, let us. I am going to write down the actual sequence. Think of this as actually the weather pattern and you are the forecaster here. Okay. So, let us say as a token I let you, okay, so let us predict something at the beginning, okay. Uh, so, this was the real bit, okay. Let us say you got it right, okay. I give you the freedom to get it right, okay. Second bit, okay. You predict 0, okay. Next bit. Make up your mind. Zero. zero. Okay, good news. Okay. Next one. Okay, I'll I'll give a chance to the people sitting in the back. I think there's a dominance of ones behind. Okay, so let's go with something, right? Okay. I'll give you some. I'll give you something to help you. Okay. I've written on a bit sequence. It's not something that I came up with. Okay. I tossed a coin, okay, of a certain bias. You know what the bias of a coin is? The probability that it comes up heads, okay. It may not be a fair coin, but the sequence that I have written down essentially is a typical sequence from tossing a coin. Never mind, okay. Whether it helps you or not, okay. Okay. Okay, getting better. Okay, people who are saying 1, why do you think it should be 1? Okay, 
okay someone said pattern but there is perhaps a simpler perhaps there is a simpler logic going on in your mind okay i told you that this is being generated from a bias coin okay so is there a is there a rational for saying one what is the rational yeah so someone has said there are more ones than zeros in what you have seen so far okay is there a rational for predicting zero there isn't actually okay honestly there is not much basis to believe that you would get away with predicting zeros okay and there you have a simple rule for prediction okay you what is the prediction rule it just looks at the previous the sequence of outcomes so far okay which is the top top row and makes a prediction for the next next day's bit okay depending on what you have seen and what is this rule you are telling me you take you say take the majority of ones or zeros in the previous sequence okay and just output your prediction is that okay so here you predict one okay so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6th okay you got it right and you can continue this chain okay i mean i can write down up to i guess 50 numbers <laughs> okay and you can apply essentially the majority rule and find out what happens here okay so you've given me essentially a prediction rule it's a very non trivial prediction rule okay it's not a dumb prediction rule it's not someone who's always predicting zero or always predicting one it's an adaptive rule right is it doing something intelligent right and in this case in fact it will actually turn out that uh, so now i'll tell you how i i wrote down the sequence i just went to matlab and simulated a random draw of a bunch of numbers with a from a coin which is which has bias of 0.7 okay so 70% of the time that sequence will actually have ones okay and you will actually be doing quite well this majority rule if you work out the calculations you will also be getting uh, predictions correct at about rate 70% okay and in fact you can also say that you can't do anything better than this really in the sense of the word okay so note that the majority majority rule also did not require knowing the the actual bias of the coin okay it didn't care about how the sequence came about okay so keep these things in mind we have already jumped ahead quite a bit compared to what i planned i mean you are you already know a lot of things which is good but maybe it's good to revisit them again okay so everything is everyone understands this game and sort of okay this is a very simple setup we'll try and make things a little more complex and see how how far we can go okay any questions at this point about what i am going to do or what uh, we are going to do or what we are not going to do okay great ha uh, so so this is a formal description of the game i put down things a little more mathematically okay so there are rounds of time t equal to 1 2 3 and so on the, the game is played over n rounds in each round so you are the predictor okay you are the learner you get to see the current bit yt okay so this was y1 y2 y3 and so on up to yn this is the real the real sequence as it were okay sequence of uh, Uh, stock market uh, crashes or not okay or whether whether it rains or not and you are the you are the the one who is essentially seeing the current days weather and trying to predict the next days weather okay you must output a guess after you've seen the current bit you must output a guess for the next bit yt plus 1 okay without seeing it of course right based on all your observations up to now okay let us denote your guess at time t for the next bit as zt plus 1 okay it has to be either 0 or 1 okay By the way, uh, if I asked you to pre predict a bit, what are your possible answers? How could you behave? What what could be your possible answers? It could be zero or one. You could also try and do something a little more fancy. Yeah. So someone said randomize. Good. So you could essentially uh, let's say flip a coin and then essentially answer the result of that coin. Okay. You'll be answering zero or one, but that's different from answering a deterministic zero or a deterministic one. okay you could so it's essentially a randomized answer random answer okay i could decide i don't want to answer zero or one specifically i might just depending on my whim and whims and fancies i'll answer one with probability 0.8 and zero with probability 0.2 that's also valid okay i don't know if the med department is doing that or not but uh, that's a different question okay but what you presented what you told me here the the majority rule for predicting is it a deterministic rule or is it a randomized rule if i give you the entire history of the past is it a deterministic prediction or is it a randomized prediction it's a deterministic prediction great okay uh one might wonder why why you sort of think about something as fanciful as randomized prediction but things will become clear very soon okay turns out that randomized predictions magically can help okay 
okay so so we have set up the, the game here essentially it's exactly what i asked you to do predict the next bit given the current days bit and the game lasts for n rounds it's a repeated game okay you also need to so you gave me an algorithm right a strategy for predicting the next bit i can come up with my own strategy for predicting next bit right how do you compare two strategies you need a measure of performance right of a given strategy if you give me a rule for guessing i run this over n rounds and i come up with a certain value that i call the performance measure of the strategy right you should be able to say one strategy outperforms the other right so here is a, a rather natural way of defining performance for an algorithm okay so suppose you came up with your prediction strategy okay you wrote down a rule to predict the next bit from the previous bit at any time t going from 1 to n okay and you ran this okay if the real sequence was y1 y2 to yn whatever i wrote on the top row or whatever i have on this piece of paper beforehand okay i just say that i'll measure your performance as follows every time you make a wrong prediction as i told you i'll charge you a cost of 1 rupee okay every time you get a prediction right no cost charged okay you get away with that okay so essentially i'm just interested in the number of correct guesses okay or rather uh, i allow you to essentially be randomized you can output even at any time you can decide to take a probability and answer 0 or answer 1 in that case i'll just take the mean uh, well anyway the mean is just the running average i might uh, if you if you behave randomly i will also take the expectation in addition okay since you are behaving randomly i need to take expectation over everything okay uh okay there's a small typo here uh, i'll measure the loss or cost as the mean number of wrong guesses okay this is not correct guesses because every time you make a wrong guess it costs you something right so this should be read as incorrect guesses not correct guesses okay correct guesses is good you want to have a high number of correct guesses and you want to have a low number of incorrect guesses so low should correspond to a cost okay but let's think in terms of costs an algorithm that let's say has typically lower costs wins over another algorithm that has higher costs if you are able to show that okay so we are searching for essentially rules that can minimize cost this is a typical mathematical way of writing down and comparing strategies in learning or algorithms or whatever you may have ha uh, so i'll write down this this expression don't get scared looking at this it's very easy to parse this so the game is going on for n rounds okay round 1 round 2 up to round n okay i gave you let's say the first bit the first loss is zero okay i'll allow you the luxury of knowing the first bit for instance okay of having predicted it correctly i don't count it uh, every time uh, so what i do is i go over time starting from time 2 all the way up to time n okay i look at the correct the real bit and the predicted bit okay i note down the, uh, the real bit and what you predicted from the previous round okay so zt is your prediction for the tth bit from round t minus 1 right at any time t and yt is the real outcome whether it rained or not in real life okay and what you told me about whether it's going to rain okay and this is a function which essentially captures the loss okay so <coughs> l of zt yt so based on what i told you what should be the cost of getting what should be the cost of this if zt is 0 and yt is 1 how much should i charge you i should charge you 1 the cost is 1 for whenever zt and yt do not agree okay and the cost is 0 if they agree okay so l is a simple function of two variables which just outputs uh one if those two are the arguments are distinct and output zero if they are the same okay it's just a fancy way of specifying this cost structure okay and what i do is add up all these losses there are a total of n minus 1 terms i'm adding here right so i just take the mean this is what i mean by the mean the mean number of mistakes you've made this is the mean number of mistakes right and this is a symbol that stands for expected value in case you try and issue sort of random predictions if your zt's are all random they are random variables you decide that i am not going to be deterministic i am going to just answer randomly okay that might still depend on the history but i allow myself randomized algorithms and hence i just take the expected value fine so that this is finally a number okay so this is the cost this is the average cost of your algorithm okay or the average rate at its make it's making wrong guesses is that clear okay great excellent okay so this is all just to explain this is expectation ah uh, l is a function of two arguments which is one if and only if these two are uh, distinct otherwise it's zero okay and a good strategy or an algorithm to play this game is something that typically achieves small loss the smaller an algorithm the smaller the loss of the algorithm is the better you are okay so it's all laid out very clearly 
Okay. <clears throat> so, what's a good bit prediction strategy or algorithm? Okay. You already told me one. Okay, which seems fairly interesting. Okay, it just say it. I mean, the prescription is simple, but it is fairly powerful. It says take the instances of 1 and 0 in the previous whatever you saw and just predict the majority bit. Okay, if there is a tie, what do you do? You either do random or you just resolve it one way or the other. It does not matter much, okay. may not matter much or fine feel free to choose randomly, okay. that is also fine. So, each of these tie break rules gives you specifically one kind of algorithm, okay. but they are all uh, forms of the majority rule. Essentially, the intelligence here is a majority rule. Okay. So, random guessing versus deterministic guessing, we already talked about it. Okay. The majority rule, okay. You already told me about it, okay. So, let us now think about what the performance of the majority rule, for instance, is, okay. Under what situations is the majority rule always going to be good, you think? Someone is nodding their heads, okay. People are pessimistic. Okay, why do you why do you think it's not going to be the case? Okay, we'll see anyways. Okay, just perhaps uh, retain the suspense for a little bit more. Turns out that majority is very good in certain certain situations. The world acts in a certain way, and it's not good uh, always. Okay, we'll see why it fails. Okay, so let's try and think about how majority performs when the world. When I say the world, the world is essentially the sort of what is generating your sequence. Okay, the the, the let's say the weather model or set of all climatic conditions on earth that generates today's weather. Okay. It is part of a complex process, right? it is a complex uh, uh, interactions which lead to rain being formed. right? So, uh, let us try and think of a very simple model of the world, which is what I call a stochastic or a probabilistic model. Okay. This is exactly what I told you. I told you that these bits are really independent outcomes of coin tosses. Okay. So, bits are the outcomes of independent tosses of a coin and a 0, let us say we use 0 to denote tails and 1 to denote heads. Okay with some bias, some fixed bias, okay, p, okay, so p is the probability that the coin lands hits, it is some number between 0 and 1, I take such a coin, I keep tossing it and that is, I mean, not I in the sense the creator of the world has tossed this coin and essentially that is the sequence you are ending up having to predict, fair enough, okay. You might disagree with this assumption, it is really a modeling assumption, okay, it is really something, an assumption about how the world behaves in which a learner is acting, right. But uh, uh, believe it for a minute, this is not the only way of modeling the world, there are much more complicated ways of looking at the world, but this is at least a starting point, okay, a probabilistic view of the world, okay, is this clear, okay, great. Uh, so, let us think about how majority performs in a stochastic model, okay, in this kind of just a simple coin tosses model, okay. So, uh, so again to recap, uh, you are trying to predict a bit sequence, but uh, at the back of the scene essentially the bit sequence has also been generated by tossing coins. So, it cannot be too wild. Okay, If you toss a coin for a long um, large amount of time it cannot, uh, there are only certain kinds of sequences that, that can arise with higher probability and so on. You know that stuff. Okay. okay, So, it turns out that in this case majority is great. Okay, It performs almost ideally. Okay, it is the best you can do without having to know about the bias of the coin. Okay, Of course, you do not, you assume you, you at least, I mean it, it would be too far fetched to assume that you also know the p, the bias of the coin. Okay, you cannot go and ask the creator of the world what is the p that you used. Okay, that is a very unrealistic thing. Okay, you, you, you build an algorithm that uses as little information in the start as, 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 as possible, but it is giving you some sequence of predictions. It is it's an adaptive rule at least that adjusts to, to the past, right. And it actually turns out that majority is great, okay. So, why is this? Well, let us do a simple thought experiment, okay. Suppose the p that was used, okay, the bias of the coin that was used to toss, to generate the sequence was some number between 0 and half, let us say 0 0.3 to be concrete, okay. In reality, so the, the, the learner does not know this, but the sequence actually is being generated by tossing a coin of probability 0.3 of landing heads, okay. Uh, so, this is an interesting statement. No matter any prediction rule that you write down, depending on the past and predicting the next bit, the loss, okay, the the, the mean number of uh, uh, the mean number of mistakes, prediction mistakes, you cannot make the mean number of mistakes close to zero, 
okay you you can only do as well as the number p itself okay is the statement clear the meaning of the statement we'll think about why it is true in a bit okay suppose i work i actually generated coins uh, uh, I, i generated coin tosses using a coin of bias p okay i mean and i am interested in the in the in the uh, mean number of correct guesses for the majority algorithm where this expectation is so the majority algorithm the predictions are deterministic okay you just told me that it's not a randomized algorithm so what is the expectation over the expectation is over all types of coin tosses that i can get by tossing the coin of bias p okay so if i toss a coin of bias p of course every sequence is possible you agree right but there are some sequences that are more likely okay so this is the overall expectation so take a particular sequence measure its mean, measure its mean loss when the majority algorithm is run over it and multiply it by the probability of that sequence having occurred in the first place okay according to the model the stochastic model okay and then sum up over all such sequences that's what i call by this expectation it's a single number which factors in the relative probability of certain sequences having occurred in the first place okay is that clear okay so this is just to remind you of the the uh, performance metric so the claim here is that the loss of any prediction strategy cannot be below p okay and the argument for 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 this why this is true is as follows okay suppose i asked you to predict bits of the sequence okay and i also told you that i am going to use a coin of bias p to generate it okay i showed you the coin i said this is a coin of uh, bias 0.3 of landing heads i am going to toss it here under the table okay i am going to play this game with you okay you know up front that it is p small p okay i am not going to reveal the toss to you but i ask you to predict the next bit and then i play this game i reveal the bit only after you have made the prediction fair enough ah this is giving you additional power right additional information okay even if you know that let's say p is equal to 0.3 ah so here is a question suppose you knew that p is equal to 0.3 you knew the actual model which was used to generate the data okay uh what is a good prediction strategy what is the best prediction strategy in fact toss okay so here is a good suggestion toss a coin with the same bias okay so i i pull out i manufacture an uh, an independent coin of bias p and toss it and irrespective of what comes up on top okay i return the answer as the sequence of coin tosses generated from my coin okay that's a good attempt but there's something that will do even more better exactly the dumbest strategy is actually wins in this case you always predict zeros okay it may not it may still not sound trivial i mean natural enough but if you knew even knew the bias of p if i told you that it is 0.3 or 0.4 or whatever 0.45 anything less than 0.5 the best thing is to predict zero it's like asking you suppose i'm going to toss i'm going to play this game only once okay i'm going to toss a coin of bias p which is point p is equal to 0.3 i give you one one chance to predict the bit okay and uh, i essentially the odds are essentially that if you predict it right uh, you get a million dollars and if you predict it wrong you lose a million dollars okay it's actually optimal in expect in expectation to actually just predict zero if p is close to zero and if p is close to 1 you would always predict 1 without thinking anything okay and it doesn't help even if you have repeated repeated tosses okay so perhaps this might be something that you could think about at home if you don't completely understand this try and show this formally okay there can be no prediction strategy by prediction strategy i mean something that is only allowed to look at the present and then uh, guess the future you cannot do anything below p in this stochastic model okay and the best thing that does it is essentially the dumb strategy okay it's not even learning anything it's using the the, the prior information that is given to you that p is equal to something less than half and just predicting zero it works even if i tell you that i am going to choose a number p between 0 and 1/2 okay it doesn't matter okay is, is this clear ah uh, even if you know p you cannot do better than this okay so so why is the loss of any prediction strategy uh, cannot be ever below p so what is the dumb strategy that you just told me always predict zero okay so let's analyze what happens when you toss the coin only once you are going to predict zero anyways okay so when will you suffer a loss when the coin lands heads right when you get a one with what probability does that happen 
one happens with probability small p again okay p is something 0.3 right so if you just predicted zero you will suffer a loss with probability p and the expected loss at that time step will be essentially small p so the loss of this very dumb strategy is small p and in fact you cannot improve it okay so this is just a thought exercise this is one of the steps on our route to something more complicated so it's good if you have understood this okay so now let's come back to so of course this was in an unrealistic model i told you the p i mean the learner or the med department already know knew, know the p uh, knew the p okay this is unrealistic of course it does not act, have access to any such p it can only make up matter, make up things in, inside its head okay so uh, something that is more realistic is essentially this prediction game without any other side information okay and and a rule like majority which just uses the previous uh, bits to predict net, next bit it does not use any other information about a certain p or what not right it's a simple state forward rule look at the previous bit predict the next bit next bit right in fact it turns out that the majority rule okay so i just told you that any rule cannot get performance below p average loss performance the majority rule in fact is almost as good as that okay without knowing the p okay even it's it's not so in the statement of the majority rule if i write down the algorithm it's just saying take majority and predict the next bit right it's not like compute any p or estimate some p or whatever there is no explicit computation of any it's not trying to estimate any p explicitly but in fact it's doing it very implicitly okay and it turns out that the loss of the algorithm of the majority rule if you play this game for n rounds okay the average loss is p plus a very small number which goes down as the number of tosses longer you play the game it goes down at at a rate 1 over square root 10 okay so slightly harder perhaps homework problem for you to solve uh, but you can try this out uh, at your own time and convenience okay so this is something very nice it's saying that the majority rule can actually match the performance of what you could have done when you actually had access to p okay that's the spirit in which you should read this okay clear enough okay <clears throat> so this was in a very nice world where we assume that you know the weather is sort of independently behaving every day as as a coin behaves independently and so on okay of course that's not how the weather is okay of course that's not how many many processes or many time series in the world are the stock market does not behave independently every day people don't wake up every day and say i'll do something independently and generate today's outcomes right there is a certain sort of complex dynamics that drives pretty much every process that you observe okay so we need to be a little more less restrictive or relaxed in our assumption of the world okay so here is where things get more interesting and perhaps little more complicated we'll move to a non stochastic world okay there is no probability structure in the world okay in fact the bit sequence that you want to predict is the top part here the y the sequence of y's right or what what i wrote down on the paper before i came to you and and played this game could in fact be arbitrary i could have written down any sequence of my fancy okay it could it necessarily need not have been after tossing a coin okay so in that sense quote and quote strange things are possible okay strange sequences are possible okay what do i mean by a strange sequence so give me an example of a sequence that uh, so this is a question again to you uh, try and think of a sequence that is uh, very uh, very atypical if you toss a coin of bias p a single coin of bias p always sorry all heads good one okay so all heads is is very atypical but on the other hand you could also argue that it's sort of easy to learn it's very stable okay all tails is also it's it's definitely infrequent but it might be easy to learn because it's sort of stable okay equal number of heads and tails is fine is is very likely when p is close to half okay or equal to half so it is possible for certain p's to achieve that yeah you had a question okay fine a lot of tails a lot of heads so essentially he is suggesting that heads and tails occur in long bursts okay which is which is a good observation because they typically not do not occur in long bursts okay you won't typically find a long bunch bunch of heads and a long bunch of tails then a long bunch of heads long bunch of tails okay alternate zeros and ones is also fine uh, uh, although the frequency of ones and zeros is actually half it could be produced by a bias uh, half coin exactly alternating is is not very likely is 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 typically rare okay there will be some random gaps okay another example is a system or a world that essentially behaves probabilistically but the probabilistic parameters change from time to time okay so let's say the first half of the sequence 
is uh, essentially a coin generated by a coin of bias 0.2. The second half is being generated by a coin of bias 0.9, okay, and then continues by essentially periods of time when a different bias is used. So, even a stochastic model can produce results which are very atypical of a single independent tosses model, okay. So, there are so you gave me a lot of good examples of atypical sequences and in particular I will I'll, we'll make the assumption that there is no probabilistic model on the world itself, okay. There, there is some sequence, you want to predict some bit sequence, okay. So this for instance actually arises when let us say you are trying to compress files, okay. So file compression algorithm, it has to essentially take an input bit sequence and output some other bit sequence, okay. So it has to do a pretty good job at trying to guess essentially the correlation between bits and it has no information to start with, it does not know that the file that it is going to compress was generated by some bit tosses and it is too unrealistic to assume that, okay. So it makes sense to sort of completely throw all assumptions about probabilistic generation uh, of sequences uh, to the trash can and think very freshly about this, okay. Right, so I, uh, yeah, we already went over some examples, okay, <coughs> of such bad sequences, okay, but I am still asking you to predict those, okay. So is it even possible is the question. Okay, can I even predict an arbitrary bit sequence well enough? I cannot, okay. I mean, no matter what I do, I do not have a look into the future. Without that essentially things can go very, very bad without any structure in the problem, okay. <coughs> so let us try and think about a similar thought experiment for the majority algorithm again, okay. I guess I have 10, 15 minutes, okay. Okay, good, good to go slow. Uh, so how good is the majority algorithm now? I am allowed to write down any bit sequence beforehand and I am going to test the majority algorithm on that, okay. The question is as follows, okay. Does the majority algorithm perform extremely well on all sequences? So even before that, okay, so we have to redefine our performance measure, okay. So this was the performance measure, it is still fine as a performance measure. Okay, only that uh, in the sense that there is no probability model on the sequences now, okay. So the expectation if at all is only on, so you fix a particular sequence, the model is as follows, right. I write down a particular sequence, it is deterministic and it is fixed, okay, and it is kept with me on this piece of paper, okay. And you propose your algorithm and we will run this, your algorithm on, on this bit sequence that I have written down and I write down essentially the, the average loss that you suffer on the sequence, okay. And with an expectation if, if you use some random bits in the, in, in, in the process of running your algorithm, okay. And I am interested in the worst case loss performance over all possible sequences I can write down, okay. I can write down any of the 2 to the n bit sequences on this piece of paper, okay, for n rounds. And I am going to test your algorithm on each of those sequences and the one that does the worst, okay, the one on which your algorithm suffers the most, I will take that as your loss measure, okay. Clear enough? Now I want to ask the question, uh, how good can that be, okay. And we need to have a reasonable, uh, so here we, we, we showed that the fundamental limit in the stochastic world, okay, for, for, for uh, the loss is the number p using which essentially the model was generated, the coin tosses were generated, right. In, in, in other sense, p is the, the frequency of ones observed in the actual string. Okay, with high probability, very, very likely if the coin was uh, generating outcomes, uh, coin of bias p, then p also can be interpreted as the long run frequency of ones in the sequence, okay. So let us just be a little realistic and say that in the non-stochastic world, we would like to see how far this number is for any algorithm. Recall that this is the worst case over all sequences I am testing you for. How far that is from, so what I will do is I will take a particular sequence, I will take this number and subtract from it the frequency of ones in that string which I wrote down, okay. I am trying to center it, okay. I will be satisfied if I can predict, if I can, so if I have written down a sequence with let us say 70 percent ones, I can write down any pattern I want, but let us say it had 70 percent ones on this piece of paper and I played the game with you, okay. I would be happy if I can essentially get the mistake rate or the, 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 the frequency of correct predictions close to 70 percent, okay. I just want the frequency of uh, the number of times I predicted that rain will occur, okay, that to be essentially equal to the long run frequency at which rain really occurred, okay, that is all I care about. P is not the bias of the coin in this setting, but P is to be interpreted as a frequency parameter, frequency of the number of ones, okay. So, we are interested in this minus uh, the frequency of ones, okay, 
or rather another way to look at it as follows. So in this uh, non-stochastic guessing game, let us say I have two very dumb predictors. One predictor always predicts 0, okay. One predictor always predicts 1, okay. If I write down any arbitrary sequence, right, let us say 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, okay. What is the average loss suffered by the dumb predictor which always predicts 0? The loss is going to be 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2 over 7. The loss suffered by the, uh, the other dumb predictor is going to be 5 over 7, okay. I, I, uh, I, I will be happy if I can approach the, the performance of one of these, the, the best among these two predictors, okay. So I will be happy if I can achieve on this sequence a single algorithm if I can design that achieves loss 2 over 7, okay. Note that uh, depending on the sequence, one of these predictors might do well. It is not always one predictor that does, does well on all possible sequences, that cannot happen, okay. But if you think about it, in the non-stochastic world, the goal is to essentially try and obtain performance. So this minus the frequency of 1s or the frequency of zeros, okay, corresponding to these two predictors. So I want to center this performance with respect to the best performance of either the zero predictor or the one predictor and I want to basically minimize that loss, okay. I will be happy if I can do that, okay. So if this sounds a bit abstract, let us come down to the concrete uh, example of trying to see what the majority algor algorithm can do here, okay. How good is the majority algorithm in this kind of model where I define the loss over all, the worst case loss, okay. So can you think of, so the majority rule is well defined, you defined it for me, right. Is there a really bad sequence for the majority algorithm? Okay, if you think about it. There is a sequence of y bits, bit sequence y for which the majority algorithm, you can force the majority algorithm to always make a mistake, okay. What is it? All ones is great, it will do a great job. Alternating ones and zeros, good start, okay. But it has to be a specific kind of alternation. You want, I am claiming you can force it to make a mistake at every time. So I can either start with 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 or 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Which one should I write down? Okay, so it turns out that this is the right one. Okay, so 1, 0. So if this kind of sequence occurs, it is it's the majority algorithm's nemesis. Okay, so what will, so you predicted something here, okay, without any, forget what it is, right. What will you predict here? 1, right. And let us say the majority algorithm is somehow defined that you know you go with uh, 0 if there is a tie break, okay. So you can come up with uh, bad sequences for any kind of majority algorithm, does not matter. But let us say the majority algorithm for a tie break uses 0, okay. Then essentially you will have a 0 here, then you will have a 1 here, then a 0 here, then a 1 here and so on, okay. So in a sequence of length n, how many mistakes is it making? Yeah, n, okay, well, yeah, n minus 1, let us say n minus 1 is close to n, so n mistakes. How many mistakes uh, does the dumb predictor with 0 make? n by 2. How about the other one? Right. So they are able to make n by 2 mistakes. This guy is making n mistakes, okay. So it cannot even be close to uh, either of these two, okay. This sequence thwarts it, okay. Just by design essentially I could write down a sequence that actually completely beats it, okay. Is it clear? So it cannot even come down, come close to sort of doing what a dumb predictor can do, okay. The best of essentially dumb predictors, okay. Is, is that clear? It is a very simple argument, okay. And this is essentially called, you can call it by several terms, but philosophically one thing to think about it from machine learning point of view is overfitting to data, okay. You put too much trust, too much trust in your past, okay. And essentially you think you are very smart, but essentially things can go drastically wrong. This is a common phenomenon in learning, okay. But there are ways to get around it, okay. Randomize it 50 50? Randomize 50 50 would do very badly on very, very trivial sequences, right. So, if you, so here is the thing, right. If you gave me the algorithm as 50 50, right, 50 50 algorithm, I can design bad sequences for that. Okay, so think of the all one sequence, okay. What would happen in the all ones for the all one sequence? Your 50-50 algorithm would make mistakes half of the time. 
the predictor which always predicts 1 would make 0 mistakes, okay. And so your loss would actually grow as n by 2, the, the difference, okay. So the average loss is you cannot get below half. Exactly. So uh, let me be a little more precise, okay. This might make matters simpler. <clears throat> so you, you give me your algorithm A, okay. A is a set of rules to take the past and predict the next bit, okay, and you apply it over time. It could be majority, it could be a 50 50 or whatever, right. And what I do is I run A, so I fix a sequence uh, y1 through yn, okay, and I essentially evaluate the expected loss, okay, 1 by n minus 1 summation. Okay, let us say I take the expected value. Okay, over random bits that the algorithm might use. I just do not do this. I take, I subtract from this the least loss of the two dumb predictors. Okay, so min of, so what is the first dumb predictor, uh, what is the loss of the first, the predictor that always predicts 0? It is the number of 1s in the sequence. Okay, so min of, so what is the number of 1s in the sequence? If a sequence is y1, y2 up to yn, it is the sum of the yns, okay, in shorthand. So summation yi divided by n and 1 minus summation yi divided, that is the loss of the other dumb predictor, okay. okay. I take this number and I maximize this, the worst case loss over all sequences y1 through yn, okay. This I call as a performance metric of any algorithm that you give me. I am going to test it over all sequences and measure in each case how far it is from the, the, the single dumb predictor that does well, okay, this is one way of interpreting it and I want this to be as small as possible. The question is can I even make it go, go to 0, okay. The question is can this be made to go to 0, okay. So 50-50 rule will not work, you can show that the, the, the rate, this, this cannot go below half for instance, okay. The majority rule certainly does not, why? Because there exists a certain sequence which we built here. For which again the loss is n is, is, is n by 2 cumulative, the difference and then you cannot make it go below half. The question is can you even do something that gets you below half, below half or close to 0. So if you modify the majority chain, the majority yeah, algorithm, yes. Like uh, if, uh, for 0 giving preference to 0, if we uh, get more of an unsuccessful result, we change it to 1. Okay, good. So the sequence is constant and uh, after some time we will get so what do you mean by giving more preference to 0? Is there an example of? On majority, preference to 1. Okay. Yeah. And for your sequence, if we give preference to 1, then we will get loss of 1 by 2. Okay. Yeah. So if we give preference to 1, then we will get success. Sure. But uh, here is, you can try all those things, but here is the claim, okay. This is perhaps something interesting. You give me any deterministic prediction rule, okay. Majority was a deterministic prediction rule. Now you are suggesting perhaps another deterministic prediction rule. I somehow deterministically give more preference to zeros or deterministically give more preference to ones. Any fancy rule I can come up with, okay. Any deterministic prediction rule is bad, okay. In fact, I cannot make this difference go down to zero at all, okay. I cannot ever make this difference go down to zero, okay. So why is this, okay. Why is this? In the majority rule, why did we, why were we able to come up with this? Why were we able to come up with, how were we, I mean, what was the thought process behind coming up with this? I just wrote this bad sequence now. Uh, there is no, there is really nothing uh, likely or unlikely in a non-stochastic world. It is all about whether I can build a sequence to fool your algorithm, okay. So, okay, so you give me any deterministic algorithm to predict, okay. What is a deterministic algorithm? You give me, give, given a past y1, y2 up to yt, yt plus 1, the prediction zt plus 1 is a deterministic function of y1 through yt, okay. Now consider a sequence, okay, so suppose so a deterministic algorithm will predict the first bit deterministically, okay, by design. Let us say it starts by predicting 0. Its design is such that when you have coded the algorithm, it starts with an initial guess of 0. It could be 1, does not matter, okay. 
whatever it is consider the sequence that starts with the opposite bit okay in principle i am trying to build a bad sequence okay now supposing the first bit were one what would your algorithm predict it's some specification right it's a deterministic function of that one that it has seen suppose it were to predict zero somehow okay after seeing one bit it, it prediction for the second bit is deterministic it's zero you just told me it's a deterministic algorithm i'll put a one opposite bit there okay now supposing the first two bits were actually these two what would your algorithm predict suppose it were to predict one in principle in theory a bad sequence would essentially be something that is zero there. so if you build the sequence recursively right you can force the algorithm to make a loss of one at every time okay that's number one right for any deterministic this is not just for majority you give me any deterministic algorithm i can always build a bad sequence depending on your algorithm okay so you suffer a loss of n okay unnormalized the best predictor out of 0 or 1 the dumb 0 or the dumb 1 the best one of them can suffer loss of no more than n by 2 okay the number of ones in in this entire sequence is more than 50% the best predictor one will do well it will suffer loss of less than n by 2 okay or in the other way around the best predictor zero will do well so this term will actually be no more than n by 2 you are already suffering loss n so the difference will be at least n by 2 okay so in short no deterministic algorithm can be designed such that it can even come close to the prediction to the performance of the two dumb predictors okay but what is the point of doing all this okay so someone said uh, randomized algorithms okay this is where uh, you start thinking about randomized strategies to guess to predict okay and in fact here is this curious statement there exists actually a randomized prediction rule meaning a rule that takes the past and predicts randomly a bit for the future according to some intelligence whose cost or this normalized cost whatever i've written down here okay so this zt is going to be a random function of y1 y2 y3 up to yt yt minus 1 okay such that uh, so cost tends to p so in the sense the centered cost actually tends to zero so uh, in fact there exists such a rule okay so here so i must say that sort of there are some subtleties while presenting the statement because the moment you introduce a randomized rule okay so okay i have already put an expectation here so this so it's really a randomized rule so it will essentially take expectation over all these okay and i'm claiming that this will go to zero okay so how is the question okay so i don't know i am probably out of time but maybe i'll outline in a few lines how this works okay this is one of the key insights in essentially uh, the online learning model that we study here and this leads to a lot of insights for more complicated problems okay so the algorithm is as follows so recall that you want to try and essentially predict the next bit okay what are the possible values for the next bit either 0 or 1 okay the weather can either be 0 or 1 okay you want to predict that think of it imagine it as a tussle or a war between the value 1 and the value 0 okay so essentially one is an actor that comes and says i want you to predict one next time okay next day is better zero is someone that comes and says i want to fight it i please please accept my prediction and predict predict my label which is zero okay think of it as a duel between these two values for the next bit there are only two values so we can think of it as two actors who are fighting for your attention okay and essentially the the, the game is essentially to whoever has higher influence wins okay in predicting the next bit okay so what we'll do is we'll assign weights to 0 or and 1 okay so w1 w0 initially let's assign equal weights to both of these you don't have any information about the sequence you're going to predict so let's assign equal importance to both of these so called experts okay dumb experts okay, okay. they are equal so you can set it to any equal number but this is just a way of saying we give them equal importance okay if one of them goes below then he or she is said to have lesser influence okay what we do is so this is the loop at time t 
Oh, this is the game being played, right? So you observe yt, you observe the real weather bit, right? And you have to issue a prediction for zt plus 1, okay? So what you do is as follows. You have a current set of weights w0 and w1, okay? With this in mind, think of this as a probability distribution on the, on, on, on the values 0 and 1 and just randomly predict a bit according to this distribution, okay? So, so pr predict uh, 1 with probability So what is a natural way to capture the influence of weights W0 and W1? If I have two numbers, positive numbers, how would you transform them into a probability distribution over two numbers? Relative importance, okay. So the probability of predicting 0 and probability of predicting 1 should be in the ratio of their weights. There is only one choice, okay. So W1 divided by W1 plus W0 and predict 0 or predict 0 with the remaining probability. It is a randomized rule. Use this probability distribution W1 by W1 plus W0 and W0 by W1 plus W0 in that ratio. Toss a coin with that probability and randomly generate your next guess, okay. That is predict predict ZT, ZT plus 1 equal to 1 with this probability or 0 otherwise, clear, independently, okay. So it is not good if you keep these weights the same, 1 and 1 remains the same, you are not doing any learning, this is very dumb, okay, essentially equal to a half hour strategy, predict 50-50 percent of the time, right. You need to factor in the extra bit that you see, that you saw. So this bit, if it was 1, what should happen intuitively? You should try and give more importance to 1 in the future, okay, as someone pointed out. You should bias 1 more, okay. So here is what you do. So the real bit was 1. Let us say real bit was yt equal to 1, let us say, okay. Before that, uh, so there are these two experts, one is always dumbly predicting zeros, one is predicting ones, but this was the real bit yt, okay. It can either be 1 or 0. If it is 1, the dumb expert 0 is bad, suffered a loss. So you should penalize him. If it was 1, if it was uh, 0, the expert labeled as 1 always suffered a loss. So you should penalize the value on that, okay. So what you do is, you update these weights, so you set the new W1 as the old W1 times, uh, you multiply with some number, let us say, let me not call it beta, I will write it in a rather fancy form as e to the minus uh, alpha times the loss between 1 and the output and you update the weight of value to the relative importance of value 0 as uh, the previous weight e to the minus alpha times loss of 0 versus yt, okay. So look at this update carefully, okay. If, if the real bit was really 1, what would happen? This was, this would be L11, that is 0. So this guy's weight remains unchanged, whereas this guy's weight actually goes down by a factor e to the minus alpha. Okay. Alpha is supposed to be a positive number. So e to the minus alpha is always less than 1, between 0 and 1. So this guy's importance gets attenuated by a factor e to the minus alpha. If the other way around, the expert number 1 suffers and 0 stays the same, okay. So whoever made a mistake, his relative weight, his or her relative weight goes down. So think of it as a battle between the values 1 and 0, okay. And this loop repeats, you can repeat this loop, right. Next time you get the next day's weather, whatever, next bit, you predict whatever you had, the, the updated w's and you update the w after receiving it. Yeah, very good question. Turns out that, uh, so this is all dependent on some magical parameter alpha. In particular, if alpha is set to 0, what happens? There is no learning at all. The weights never update at all. It is always at 1, 1, okay. If alpha is set very high, what do you think will happen? Very, very intuitively. It is going to be very unstable. It will immediately reward uh, the person who did well, extremely well, okay. I mean, in, in some sense, it would kill the bad, uh, the loser by a large margin, 
force the weight down really large. It's very aggressive. Okay, alpha equal to zero is extremely. In fact, it's very very conservative, close to zero. So there should be a right range for alpha. Okay, turns out here that so this is the the theory around this. Turns out that if you are going to play the game n times, it's enough to set alpha equal to square root one by square root. Okay, so so use this parameter, implement this algorithm, and uh, you can actually get that the the loss that I wrote down goes down to zero. In fact, at a rate one over square root. Okay, so this is sort of the right thing to do in a non-stochastic. Okay, the horizon of the game. Assume that you know it beforehand. Okay, one can show that even if you don't know it beforehand, it doesn't make much of difference. You can adapt it. Okay. Okay. So I guess, uh, yeah, I had some sort of computer simulations also to show you about this algorithm and so on, about how it performs. But I guess uh, we've run out of time, so I'll just stop here and uh, let you ponder this and more uh, offline. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for a fascinating talk. Now, I guess uh, we all know how to bet smartly.